Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. In this week's weekly channel, we have, we are going to be talking to Freddie Mercury and Jim Hutton. Now, Jim was a partner with Freddie for the last seven years of his life. They were in a relationship together and he lived with him. So we are going to have a conversation with hopefully the two of them together today. So welcome Jim and Freddie. How does it feel to be together right now? Because I know in other videos when I've talked to you and done some channeling with you that um, you're not really together right now in the afterlife. Can you guys talk about that? I mean, how does that feel? Freddie says it, it feels, I think it feels weird for you, for those of you who will be fans and who will want to know, which I, I understand. He says, I understand the, the needing to know that part if we're together or not. But how, he says, I don't know how it feels for Jim, but it, it feels just quite natural to me. And Jim says, yes, I agree. I agree. I, there's not any anger or hurt feelings or any of the, that sort that um, some of you may think that I was angry at Freddie or... Um, that um, I felt um, betrayed or um, dis discarded. Um, and then none of that's true. None of that's true. I mean, there's a natural part of um, our relationship dissolving that, yes, I was quite hurt, but that was my own grief and my own feelings of, of loss, you know, and I, and I not as in the public eye as much as, of course, Freddie himself or, um, or, or as Mary either and, and the bandmates and, and of Queen, but I'd much rather prefer a more quieter life. But um, You know, being human, you do have emotions and feelings, but those things are easy, easily resolved when you... Um, shed the body and become spirit once again you know it's nice not to be sick it's really nice not to be sick oh, jim that's beautiful thank you for sharing that now i understand that you wrote a book after um freddie died um i saw that i think on one of the interview things that or comments it might have been a comment here we have a playlist for freddie mercury channeling if you are watching above life channel make sure you check out the playlist for freddie mercury but jim i understand you wrote a book is that true yes yes and it was about your life with freddie he says my life with freddie yes yes and so and he says there was a healing it was a healing process for me you know i needed i needed some time to process things and to um, get some perspective and, and let some things take shape. And, and, and I wasn't quite ready to do things on my own again. You know, it had been a good chunk of my life, you know, almost a decade I spent with Freddie Mercury. And to go from being with Freddie, it's life after Freddie is not easy. It's quite um, different and much more, as, he, as Freddie would say, boring. And then Freddie says, dull life without me, so dull. He says, unimaginative. <laughs> all right, all right. So, and I see Freddie with a cat on his lap. So Jim, did you like cats? I'm gonna ask you that. He says, you have to like cats if you're going to be around Freddie. That's just, un that's a rule, a simple rule that, that is definitely understood. You, ha you have to, you can't just tolerate the cats. You have to love the cats to be around Freddie, he says, <laughs> all right. And so, and he said, he shows me, I think he may have had one or two that were his own, or he had two cats of his own, or, and I don't know if it was before they weren't, were together or after Freddie's death that there were two cats that I see with Jim. Um, gray and white, it looks like. One has a lot of white, but I might have a little bit of gray, and then there's another one. Um, I see somebody, okay, so there's, is there a cat named Sheba? Do you guys know? Is there a cat named Sheba? Because I say Sheba, Sheba, Sheba. I think it's Sheba. It might be Shiva. Shiva or Sheba, Shiva, Sheba. I'm not sure, but I see that. Jim had just mentioned that. And then, so, okay, so the two of you, all right. So 
How would you describe your relationship in the afterlife now? Since I know that I've channeled you and you haven't really felt together or connected, what's there, is there a reason for that or what's the deal? Because a lot of times we think that when we die, we go into the afterlife and we're reunited with all our family and our loved ones and all that. So why aren't you guys together if you were in a relationship and a committed relationship and a love where you guys loved each other? And Freddie says, it's not like that. It's not like that. It's not the same. It's hard to, it's hard to define this, but uh, in a way that people could understand. But we have, our paths have crossed here and we have been interwoven to some degree, but we're very much individuals and there's no, um, and then he's, Jim steps up and says, there's no karma between us. There's no debt that needs to be paid. There's nothing owed. There's um, respect and um, he says, you know, kindness. There's an understanding here. And so, and that's as simple as that. So, Freddie, did you love Jim? Would you say, were you in love with Jim? And then Jim says, he loved the idea of me. <laughs> Having someone here and around, I think, is, is more what um, to Freddie's liking, you know? What do you think, Freddie? I think that's accurate. I, didn't, I never wanted to be alone, you know. I never wanted to be alone, but Jim was such a wonderful man and such a wonderful companion and confidant. It was, it was um, quite lovely. He's very domestic, you know. He's, he's, he's a very good caregiver, you know. And uh, he says, I mean that in the highest regard, in the, the, in the best compliment. Um, it kind of feels like, you guys, it kind of feels like Jim maybe grounded Freddie a little bit. Is how it feels. So in the movie, I know that um, the movie Bohemian Rhapsody, which was uh, loosely based on the life uh, of Freddie Mercury and Queen, um, Jim, we saw the relationship that the two of you had as depicted in the movie. How accurate was that, would you say? I mean, I know the timing of your meeting and all that kind of stuff was probably just up interpreta interpreted and it wasn't maybe accurate, but... He says, yeah, well, I think... I think a whole new generation deserves to know Freddie, like the Freddie we know, like I know, the, the generous and impulsive and fun and very sensitive uh, person that he, he was. And I think he's a legend. He's a legend that, uh, and, and that it's sometimes hard to see legends as people. And I think uh, the movie itself gave, uh, gives the opportunity for that. And then there's a much more deeper reflection. As for our relationship, I don't know. How do you think it was? How do you feel it was depicted? He looks over at Freddie and they're going to talk about it here. Let's see. And Freddie says, well, not much was shared, you know. I'm like, I know. He says, so it wasn't very accurate. You know, we did get in fights. We got in arguments and things. And, uh, but mostly it's when, you know, he didn't see things my way and I like things a certain way. And I don't like to be told no or what to do. And I, I like to be um, free to do as I please. And I know that's going to sound rather pompous and quite arrogant of me, but I, freedom is part of my nature it's it's how i live i can't be um held to a normal person's standards you know okay some of my um they're talking about okay so freddie says he shows me an image of some of their their his favorite times were just quiet moments just him and jim just hanging out just you know um just being like at home or it kind of looks like a cabin it looks like another place and it's by the water I see that place and just kind of relaxing like like normal people would do you know and he says kind of like tourists you know like on holiday he said kind of like that he says where we're just relaxing you know and there, there's nothing that has to be done and you're sort of forced into relaxing and Jim says and that's a true statement by Freddie Jim says you would have to force him to take a break. He would get into these states where he just could not relax and not um, settle down and not, um, he, you know, he just didn't live life the way 
normal people lived life. Everything was different for Freddie. And to know him, you had to understand that and be in acceptance of that. And so when he actually had the opportunity to have quiet time where he wanted it, most of the time he did not want it quiet. But when he had quiet time, it was very special. And it was special to be around him then. But he did have dark times too, and I'm not sure that I, I could speak to that or that I should speak to that, but maybe Freddie will, perhaps. So were there challenging times in your relationship, Freddie, that you'd like to share with us? In an effort to help other people in their own relationships, perhaps, or to understand um, in a more broader context your life and the complexities of it? Well, yes, I do. Um, now, nowadays, you would probably diagnose me with something, you know, like depression or, or things. Um, I would not say that I had anxiety or anxi anxiety. Sorry, my tongue is getting a little, uh, yeah. Anxiety. But depression, depression, yes. Yes, depression. Um, I would never, I would not admit to that. But I would say that, it, you know, it's funny because before the end of my life, I would say that that would be something you could notice about me. But nearing the end of my life, you wouldn't see that. You might see some sadness in my eyes and recognizing that I could feel my body dying. And I think it's a right to be sad in that case. But I never was depressed about dying, about knowing I was going to die. That did not make me depressed. So many other things I felt depressed about earlier on prior to that time. I, I, I think it's important for people to know that. And I know that depression is a very real disease. And in fact, in your times now, he's saying, Bridget, in your times, that there are many generations that will know it differently and perhaps be able to get assistance or help in other ways besides self-medicating as I and many others have done and continue to do to this day. And that's well documented, he says. So, interesting, all right, all right. Jim, do you have anything in particular that you might want to share about the relationship the three of you had with Mary? Um, specifically thinking about how after Freddie's death, you were, um, were you actually like kicked out of the house or what? Can you talk to us about that a little bit? And again, I don't want to gossip. I'm not interested in gossiping and I'm not asking you these questions because of the sensationalism of that. I'm asking you these questions because of the relationship that the two of you, you and Freddie Mercury had. And people have asked to hear from you and to talk to you. And I think that that's that that you would provide really valuable insight so can you talk about that the relationship with the three of you you know mary and you and freddie he says <laughs> mary was always the third person in the bed he says to be quite direct it um, i knew i could never hold a candle to her the relationship that Mary and Freddie have is very, very special. And to this day, and you can see it, if Mary speaks about Freddie, you can see the love. And I can't compete with that. I never expected to. And to be honest with you, I didn't expect my relationship with Freddie Mercury to last as long as it did. Would it have lasted longer if he would have lived longer? I can't say. He says, I think so. I would like to believe so, but I don't know. I don't know. Nowadays, if you, you can be married, you know, it's legal to be married. Well, at least in the United States, it's legal to be married. At least for right now, who knows, politics and all that stuff. Ridiculous politics, stay out of the bedroom politics. Hmm. Feel free to comment on that. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, you guys. Just kidding, just kidding, don't comment on that. <laughs> Jim, 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 Jim. All right, focusing, focusing. Jim, he kind of laughs. He says, no, I rather like that. He says, I rather like that. I like that about you. He says, I can see why Freddie likes you. Yes, the truth should be told. He said, the truth should be told. Yes, it should be. So do you, were you jealous of Mary or were you angry at Mary? What? He says, it's hard not to be jealous of her, but she's, she's rather a nice person. He says, it's really hard to not like her. You know, um, 
the only part to not like is the the fact that she that Freddie loves her more than she loves you and you know it there's you can't have that you can't have a full Freddie Mercury heart you can't have it no one could ever have it it's not possible because because Mary is his love and he made that quite clear and I've always known that did you so you did you feel like second best I mean to be quite frank with you did you feel that way no no not usually he says not usually Freddie never made me feel like second best he never he never compared us or or um, made me feel like that at all he always made me feel welcome he always made me feel appreciated um, very, Freddie's Mercury is very loving I would like people to know that very loving very loving and he's quite loyal to his friends as well and so Jim were you his friend or his lover I was both I was both but I wasn't surprised when Freddie left the the house and to marry I I wasn't surprised by that I, I mean he was generous with me as well he was generous with me and uh, I think that her wanting me to leave was simply because it was painful, quite honestly, for her. I think it was very painful for her to know that he wasn't there anymore. And uh, it kind of felt like I was in Freddie's house and it was hard for her, I think, to move on with me there. Okay. Okay, that, that's understandable. That's understandable. So how did you feel about her? Did she make you leave? Yeah, well, he says, well, it sure certainly looks like that, doesn't it? From the outside, it looks like that. And uh, I would have to say yes. And uh, so it wasn't your choice. It was not my choice, but it wasn't my house. It wasn't my, it was my place that I lived with Freddie. And being there without him would be kind of like a it would kind of be like a museum or something you know it's everything about it was Freddie Mercury so I don't know I don't know how it could have been different maybe she could have waited I would have appreciated that she could have waited a bit of time before um And, and I didn't make it easy for her either. I did because I wasn't ready to let go. I wasn't ready to go. So I didn't make it easier because he's making me feel like there was a court thing situation. Like, I don't know if the courts were involved or there was lawsuits involved. And he says, he, he says, yes, there were some, some complications. He says two things. And um, he says, I really don't want to discuss that. I don't think that that will help anyone. Okay. But you're a spirit. So spirit talks about anything or everything. So from a spiritual level, he says, oh, he says, but you notice the difference, don't you, right now? We are talking to you, Freddie and I are both talking to you, primarily me, talking to you in a way that the human viewers can understand and will recognize us. And then through this, they will be able to understand, perhaps through this conversation, some pieces of their own lives that they have yet to address or deal with, or maybe give them some permission for their own healing which is, is the point of all of this, isn't it? Is that the point, Jim? Yes, healing. He says healing. Healing. I feel like he's like this kind of guy that would like start a mission in Africa or, or a nonprofit or go overseas and, you know, do, I feel like he, uh, kind of global, it's kind of the energy I feel and, and wanting to expand out and outreach and that kind of a thing. That's how it feels to me, you guys. Healing is part of his purpose. Is that your purpose in the afterlife? Indeed it is, he says. Indeed it is. is that, was that part of the reason why you came into Freddie Mercury's life? Yes, indeed it is. Yes, it is. Yes, indeed. Indeed it is. Indeed it is. Yes. Hmm. Part of Freddie Mercury's healing perhaps was helping him to feel loved as he let go of life. He says, that's quite beautiful. That's how it feels to me. The energy that the two of you, it's just a supportive energy, you guys. It's very supportive. Again, I'm talking to Jim Hutton and Freddie Mercury about the relationship and the human life that they had. And so you guys can understand it as well. And 
and appreciate the relationships that you have in your own life right now. So, all right. He says, you know, thank you. He says, thank you for having, having me and letting me be a voice. He says, I, I appreciate that. You know, so often I'm mixed in with others and, and uh, I, I, he says, I appreciate it. I appreciate having a voice and to bring a message of healing. That's, that is the point. That's the purpose of all, all of this. So Jim, are you reincarnated? Yes, I am. I've been on many missions. He says, yes, right now, currently, yes, I am currently. Okay. <laughs> so he's been in and in and in. And I understand that you were HIV positive too as well. Yes, I lived with AIDS for many years. And I feel like you died of something else. Was it like a cancer or something different? And he said something complete. He said, yes, something different. He said, yes, yes. I want to say, oh, I could be wrong about this. I'm like seven years is what he says. So I know they were together for seven years, but did he die seven years after Freddie? Or in a year with a seven in it or a seventh month? Seventh month would be what, July? Um, seventh year after Mercury's death would be 1998? 1998? No, I think he lived longer than that. What was in 1998? That's interesting. Or seventh month, so it could be July. Seven years. Seven years. I don't think that's just a reflection of the relationship. I think that means something else. Seven. Interesting. If you guys know as viewers, will you please post what you think it might be in the comments below? I appreciate that very, very much. I appreciate your engagement and your value added comments are always welcome here on Above Life channel. Thank you so much, Jim and Freddie, for being here in this weekly channeling video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I hope it's inspired your spirit a bit, given you some hope, because this is your life. This is your life. So live it. Just live it. Thank you for watching.